Boom. Welcome back, everybody, to the Omniverse Comics Guide podcast. We are your Omniverse Comics Guide guys. I'm Eric Anthony. That's my pal Dave Molyneux. As <laughs> Molyneux. They say it with a French accent. <laughs> Dave, how you doing, pal? Good. Thank yeah. you, dude. <laughs> are you? Nice. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you, everybody, for watching on Twitch. All our regular folks that come and join us. Don't forget to rate and subscribe to the show if you're new to it. If you're watching on YouTube, the wonderfully edited uh, version of this live that Dave presents for us with all of the proper pictures and sound effects. Like, it's awesome. Uh, don't forget to rate and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. What do they have the little bell to let them know that there's a new episode up? Hit that little bell. That's right. And all, all the podcast platforms, thank you for listening, whether you're at work, in the car, or on your commute. And don't forget to subscribe there as well. Share it. It helps us get the word out. Community, we love doing this together. And it's always fun to have the chat with during the live. And of course, of course, nothing more important than visiting omniversecomics.guide where everything is available there. You got the reading orders, the reviews, the podcast, the videos, collector item specials, you name it. You've got it on the omniversecomics.guide where Dave and Misha tirelessly... <laughs> Just make that website better and better every time. Dude, I'm burnt out at work right now just because oh. I'm working outside in the cold. Oh, I can't and believe doing that. heavy work. So I know. It's, it's okay, though. We're having a fun time. We're making the best of it. But next week, I won't be here for the podcast. Ah. I'm going away on a vacation. But I need to recharge a little bit and get ready for the rest of the winter. Dude, what do you do? Cause you're not a vac. You you're, you never talk about going away on vacation. What do you do to, to, have time. to recharge? How um, do you keep going? I literally do just read comics and stuff. That is kind of how I stop and just try and take it. But even then, I'm normally making notes so I can do reading orders. <laughs> Otherwise, of course, you know, as we were talking about last week, what helps me recharge a little bit, which is uh, it's Magic Mind, dude. Magic Mind. So that's a little shot of... Your superhero uh, potion. That's right. It's a little shot of goodness in the morning to go with your coffee. And it gives you a little boost. Uh, th this week, as promised, I'm going to go into what's in Magic Mind. And I'm going to try and pronounce some words I don't understand. Now, it contains... Oh, it contains matcha, which is very good. Oh, nature's extended release version of caffeine. Which is nice. Bacopa Manieri. It's a new tropic. It's not like one of them old tropics. It's a new tropic. <laughs> and it improves your attention span. Because that's the thing. Like, I have a really, really bad attention span. And part of it's my probably my neurospiciness. But I, I really struggle to focus. So, yeah. Um, this really, it really helps. And I do maintain that focus all the time. So, it's just like, instead of feeling really drained going through all this stuff and having literally five to six cups of coffee a day i'm taking a shot of this and it just keeps you keeps your focus keeps you going and keeps you charged during the day especially when it contains lion's mane mushrooms like that doesn't sound like it's not feel the magic but yeah, yeah the raw like good time <laughs> <laughs> magic mind is loose so you're saying basically basically if i do a magic mind order mm -hmm. i don't need to pay for a expensive vacation because magic mind will give me what i need that's a hundred percent accurate ericsson and you can get one month for free when subscribing for three months at www.magicmind.com forward slash feb omniverse and you use our code omniverse 20 so that gets you an extra 20 percent off i gotta try it Sounds good, man. I drink too much coffee as it is, so yeah, it's not good for you, man. Drinking too much coffee is Anything. not good for you. So it's yeah, it's a nice boost, and it. I genuinely felt felt better when I started drinking it. It was noticeable. So I've been feeling good, dude. I've been feeling good. So I mean, that would that might help you too. You don't have to be an arty type. Wouldn't hurt. No. Right. Go go. It wouldn't hurt. Why not? Okay. Is it speakeasy time? It's speakeasy time. Let's do this. So the speakeasy, for those that have been around for a couple of the speakeasies, we just let loose, sit back. It's not quite the top 10. I mean, we might have a list if someone asks us to list something, but this one is a freewheeling good time where we talk about our favorite hobby uh, at random sometimes. And oftentimes Dave gives me names to try to pronounce and tests my, my skills at proper comic book pronunciation. But this week... You got 
a different plan, sir. What is in the works for this week's Speakeasy? <sighs> well, last time we asked for viewers' questions, um, which is always a bit of a gamble, isn't it? Because you don't know what you're going to get. You don't know if people are going to be bothered. Luckily, we have some very kind people who've taken some time to send some questions in. So we've got a handful of questions tonight. We're not we're not going to go overboard and, and do everything. We've just picked, we've got a select few and run through those. And some people who've asked questions are actually in tonight. So we'll get to see their cheeky little chops for the first time. Or maybe second, depending on if they've been guests on the show. Mm. Oh, hints and tips. Ooh. Mm, clues. Clues. <laughs> so nice okay are you ready All for right. the first question is that what you drinking my earbud in what are you drinking oh this is called sheepdog it is a whiskey but it's a peanut butter flavored whiskey it's five in the afternoon i just wanted i didn't want something too like right so it's a little bit of a peanut sweeter butter flavored whiskey flavor it's delicious oh, if you like that. peanut butter it's yeah, really, really good. I do. It's do they bad. do Nutella? It's really flavor? not bad. Mm. Do they do <laughs> nerds? Whiskey, do they do no. nerds, dude? <laughs> I'll just put that. That would be in good. my lager. <laughs> just throw it right in. <laughs> yeah. No. Sheepdog is the brand that I'm having. It's, I'm not sponsored by it. If it seems that way, it's just the one that's on my shelf. I'm not and sponsored by nerds, but they're very good for you. No. Well, we kind <laughs> of are. <laughs> All right, let me hear this first question that you got going on. Okay, first question. What's up, guys? Raf from Japan here. Thank you for the fantastic podcast and all the awesome content you're making. So here's my question. If you could travel to any fictional world for a couple of weeks vacation, where would you like to go? All right, peace out. So that question was from Raf Reeds, who has appeared on the show, uh, I was going to say a couple of times. Oops, oops, clue. Yeah, he's coming back soon for another manga episode. So keep an eye out for those. And he's here tonight. Cheers, Raph. Thanks for coming, man. Thanks for <laughs> what your a question. Handsome dude. Look at him there. Look at him <laughs> carrying off the whole Rocky vibe. I love it. So I wanted to do the. Doo -doo -doo, doo -doo 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 -doo. I know that would have been good. <laughs> so, be perfect. Where, where it is a great question. Where could we travel to a fictional world? I think we we did touch on this a little bit in a recent episode because i know you gave a nice pervy okay. answer so i can't remember what i even said but we're, i'm gonna go for a really boring answer and it's new york okay it's manhattan in the marvel universe because that's not a boring answer it, everything happens answer. there you'll see it all galactus will turn up there'll be spider-man swinging around yeah. the avengers will be taking off with their quinjet for to whoever Daredevil swinger. There's just everything happens in Manhattan. It's like the center of everything. I think. Aren't you? That's kind of terrifying, though. You probably die. You imagine how many people get killed in Manhattan every year in the Marvel Universe from like alien invasion yeah. and Galactus bollocks. When I was a kid, yeah, exactly. When I was a kid and I would think about, man, how cool would it be to see Superman flying by you on your way to school? Like, those were the dreams, you know? Yeah. A Batman spotting or a Spider-Man thwip. Like, oh, look, Spider-Man caught a criminal. <laughs> Friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, no. But then I think about it as an adult. I'm like, I don't want to live in that neighborhood. No, no way. Kids, man. How'd you bring up a family? You're walking and... to school and all of a sudden, <laughs> yeah, Loki's riding a dragon with Thor. <laughs> I say the nay, like we need to move at that. You know where I would want to be? The Silver Surfer becomes the herald of Galactus. Yeah. So that Zen La is preserved. Right? Yeah. That's how it goes. That's the yeah. story. Well. And and Norrin Rad, the Silver Surfer, is bored on Zen La because everything is just nice and utopian and there isn't really any problems. Mm-hmm. That's where you want to be. I think I'll go to Zen La. Zen La sounds just fine. <laughs> right? Zen La, Perfect it sounds fine. I got all the information. Yeah. I got all the information I need to, all the, the, the recorded history of technology and, and the, you know, the greatest heights that the species could be a Zen Lavian. I'll go there. Yeah. I mean, if Zen La exists, you know what? I'll go to Wakanda. How about Wakanda? <laughs> Still, it. it's perfect. My, my fictional place on Earth, right? 
Wakanda sounds good. Uh-huh. I won't bother nobody. I'll be very respectful. I won't tell anybody about the secrets. I'll keep my mouth shut about it. Or Zenla. Okay, that's fair. Somewhere very nice to be bored. And you're pretty protected in, in Wakanda because uh, like when they had a Skrull invasion, I think they were the only ones that repelled it pretty much really easily. So in Secret Invasion, they just like... Skrulls had no chance trying to get into Wakanda. It's great. That's a really good storyline, incidentally, if you haven't read it. Of the Secret Invasion tie-ins, the Black Panther one, three parts. No. Jason Aaron writes it. It's really good. Mm. I need to read that Secret Invasion, the whole storyline. It's a, it's a blind spot in my reading orders or my reading list. There are some, there are some highlights. Okay. The, the Meat Trunk said, do they have comic books on Zen La, though? If it's a utopia, do. then yes, they do. There's no such utopia. The thing is utopia. If there's no comics there. Everything. Yeah. I bet you Jack Kirby lives in Zen La too. So yeah. we'll make comics together. If that Jack Kirby went anywhere, he probably went to Zen La. Probably. <laughs> right. Why not? Okay. Silver Brilliant question. Okay. Uh, Raf reads. Thank you very much. We are going to jump Thank to a question from our next contender. Hey guys, it's Lee here from Reads Reads. So my question is, if you had one tool from a Marvel character, what would it be? So for example, like Captain America's shield, Daredevil's billy club, Spider-Man's web shooters, etc. that kind of thing. What would it be and why? Keep your answer clean. I know it's you too. Dave and, <laughs> it's Dave and... <laughs> <laughs> thank you for the question omega red i knew it <laughs> you guys are up to something okay you want to go first go ahead lead the way i don't know why my brain always goes to that thing was if you're in a fight situation yeah because i'm constantly in fight situations and under threat i if i'm in a fight situation how can i defuse it straight away and my brain first went to the ultimate nullifier why why <laughs> pointless I actually would really like Dr. Octopus tentacles. Because I, as a practical thing, that's really handy. They're re- I mean, literally really handy. You could do so much stuff. So like, <laughs> like you, I, could, I can literally operate the mouse. Don't, Omega Bread. I can operate the mouse and <laughs> have a drink and do whatever else I want. And I'm going to do it really easy because I've got like four extra arms. Alternatively... I was going to choose the Godstone, which is the 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 gem that turns John Jameson into the Man Wolf because I've got a werewolf obsession. But Man. my actual choice, as I know, it's like oh, you pick someone obscure. Yeah, but think about it: the Moonstone. So Moonstone from the Thunderbolts. She's got the Moonstone gives her powers, but she can fly. She's almost invulnerable. She's strong. She can go through walls. She can do energy blast. She's basically got all those powers just from the little stone. So surely that is the thing you want. Because I, 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 you could obviously, you could go for like the time gem or the infinity gauntlet or anything like this. Like it's too big. And it's like, it gives you all those abilities. Because like you want to fly, right? Who wouldn't want to be able to fly? Who wouldn't have, wouldn't want to have super strength? Who want to be able to go through walls? All that kind of stuff. She can do it all. So. Oh. Okay. Well, while we chat about this, <laughs> uh, those that are in the Ooh, chat, yeah, let us know what some of your options would be. <laughs> it's some answers already. Do you want me to read them out? <laughs> um, the, yeah, Cosmic Cube. Yansim came in time for the, for the tentacles, tentacles, which is, thing. <laughs> it sounds like he's watching anime. Um, BC Scrubs suggests the thing's thing. <laughs> Why would you put it? I mean, um, it'll always be rock hard. <laughs> you will. <laughs> <laughs> this is, tr- Cheers. Um, BC Scrub is also a <laughs> Cosmic Cube. And, uh, da, 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 da. yep, I think that's that's all the answers we've got in the chat so far. But, yeah. <laughs> I came in time for the tentacles. Okay. It's really got me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've been thinking about it since you said it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the You said something about the – there was some your second option sparked my – and I said, Godstone? oh, the Infinity Gauntlet. And then you're like, you know – Oh, sorry, I killed it for you, that, didn't I? That's pretty obvious. No, but then I'm like, okay, don't be so obvious. Because, like, the Infinity Gauntlet, of course, you become, like, God. So, I'm thinking, one, it would be really cool to be worthy of Mjolnir. 
Ooh. That would say a lot about your character. Yeah, right? I like so if I could be, if I could yield Mjolnir, it would say so much more about the fact that not only is it like a cool weapon, mm -hmm. stores, but now you're all. It means something more about who you are as a character. That'd be cool. The other one would be maybe um, uh, the Quantum Bands. Oh, the Quasars. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. I mean, having the. Uh, I always confuse ego. The living planet with Eon, Eon yeah, who is, who is uh, another you know, three characters, kinda... cosmic characters name, <laughs> right? That's right. So this... I I can Mogo and Ego and and then there's Eon, but then he no, opens Epoch. that closet door and there's a whole there's a whole um, universe that he steps into when he converses with Eon, which is awesome, right? Very psychedelic, yeah. And then of course. And then, of course, I think my answer would would probably be, uh, I don't know if it's officially known as Toomey, but Silver Surfer's board. To me, my board. Oh, would, uh, that'd be that'd be awesome. You're on a real surfer tip tonight, man. Then you, I am, you know, because I it, I was thinking Infinity Gauntlet, mm. but then you know the Silver Surfer with the board, you can have your girl with you riding on it, like him and oh, Don. I got a soft spot for that. So I'm like, that's, that's sweet. I like it. Yeah, that's yeah. really nice. I'm gonna go with the board. Really nice answer. I like that. But we've got a couple more answers as well in the chats. Um, Jansen has followed up yes, yes, yes. with uh, no, no, no. a Nova helmet, which is cool. Do, I can't I'm remember. That. Does he do That's the thing cool. where he puts the helmet on and then the rest of the outfit appears? I can't remember. I don't know. Did That's they a good question. I don't know. Pff, Omniverse Comics guide my ass. So um, Omega Bread says <laughs> the Wrecker's crowbar. <laughs> it's practical, elegant, it's would easily practical. smash the goatee off smug face <laughs> um <laughs> okay uh anyone anyone else with oh, sorry boy. i'm sorry i'm trying not to one week one week he won't go one week okay oh should, should we uh next question let's do next question <laughs> moving swiftly on so reed reads sent us two so he's got a follow-up question. Okay. Are you ready? If you could only read one series of a character for the rest of eternity, every other comic didn't exist, every other book or form of media entertainment didn't exist, one character, one series, what is it and why? Thanks, guys. Look forward to the answer. Great question. Really good. I think I had that on on one of the questions I would have had to ask uh, you on speaky so thank you reed uh, reads it's a great question <clears throat> really good question and i think that could be a whole you could start an entire podcast episode with a question like that yeah. I, uh dave um, take it away and then i'm gonna piggyback off of you because i'm not feeling original <laughs> <laughs> well that's the thing my my answer isn't my my actual answer would be peter david's hulk i mean alternatively preacher but Peter David's, if we're talking like superhero comics, it'd be Peter David's Hulk. It's got to be. But that wasn't the first thing that came to my head. It was Daredevil. It was Marvel Knights Daredevil first came to my head. I, I love Daredevil. Like the only character I'm still intending reading in the modern Marvel stuff, the one I'm literally looking forward to stuff for is Daredevil. But I mean, as an actual, if we're just talking a series, so we're talking like kind of a cutoff, there's a cutoff there or a run. It would be the if I could take the Marvel Knights run as a whole because that's great. But otherwise, I mean, the the real answer is Peter David's Hulk. It's got to be. There's so much there. There's so much there. Plus, you've got ten years worth of comics. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, I think the answer was pretty open ended, where it's just one character, one series. So yeah. you could pick the Hulk, and you got all of the Hulk, the good and the bad, or all of Daredevil. I mean, Daredevil's a good pick because you're going to get what you mentioned that whole era, and then of course. Everything before that is pretty solid too. There's a lot of strong people love Anne Nascenti stuff with yeah. John oh, Romita, God, I love the Frank Anna Miller Senti stuff. stuff. Like, Daredevil's not a bad pick, Dave. It's That's a, a pretty solid well, pick. Not, not to sound arrogant, but it's a great pick because, like, if you can have all of Daredevil, I mean, I'd even happily go back and read the old '70s stuff and '60s stuff because I haven't. I've read chunks. Yeah, I mean, you get Mark Wade stuff too. Mark Wade. It's a good pick. Like Charles Soule in the more Solid. recent stuff, and then Chip Zdarsky's run apparently yeah, yeah, is very yeah. good. Running, yeah, there's like there's loads with Daredevil. It's a it's a great standalone character. Yeah, good pick. Very strong. Very so. Uh, Reed Reeds, are you there? Um, 
I got a question for you. Do teams count? Can you put a team or does it have oh, to be a solo question. character? Because I didn't, I'm not sure if that would make a difference in my choice, but <laughs> it would be maybe something to consider for the comfort of it all. Uh, naturally, my pick would be Superman, just because that's what I fell in love reading comics was that thing. This was what always what brings me back to love. But I love too many characters now and I love too many. I, I'd be remiss to say that Spider-Man wouldn't be a constant pleasure to read throughout its in, his inception to through the ages, even the bad stuff. I just have a soft spot for Spider-Man. I love the character. You already said that to keep reading. The 90s, that's Our true number too. one Spider-Man fan. Um, yeah, no, I love Spider-Man, clearly. Like, I'm, I'm wearing a Spider-Man t-shirt, Spider-Man colors. True. That would be difficult to, to not to pass up on. But me, oh, man. Real, the real answer. He said you can be a team, invincible. but only one series if it gets re, re... If it starts again, I can't say that word. Brings me out in a rash. With the number one where it ends. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. I might say Invincible the entire series because you get a little bit of everything you love of superhero comics there without feeling that you've left anybody out. Mm. So you get the Spider-Man vibes. You get the Superman, the Justice League, the daredevil S characters, a little bit of cosmic. Like, it's all kind of there. That's true. In its own original way. And no crossovers, and technically. It's, well, there is one. Technically, right? There are multiple. And there's one. the book just gets... Definitely. Yeah. The book just gets better and better as you as you go on in the series. So Invincible or I maybe would go Spider Man. I guess yeah, Spider Man is, is a character that's hard to If the rule sorry. If the rule was like one series, what series do you pick? Because like it starts to diverge into the four titles and and Superman does the same. Go amazing. Yeah, I'd go amazing. Because you get the originals all the way up into the eighties when the 80s and or early 70s when it does split it's still there's a lot of of the meat is is there before and you don't always have to read all the other like web of spider-man eh, i'm okay i don't have to read that one i'd rather amazing the artists the writers the you know yeah i'd probably go marvel there's team a lot controversially there, even though it's not brilliant just because you get all the different characters that too that that's a good one too Avengers is tempting because you get a real rotating cast of characters through the years and uh, some really interesting team dynamics and you get a full. Yeah, I, I'm going to go with Spider-Man today. I wore the T-shirt. I'll stick with Peter when I'm feeling blue. Uh, I can read a Peter Parker story and it rem reminds me. Just keep going. Yeah. Keep doing your thing. Persevere. Like and, Pete. And you'll figure it out. Right. BC Scrubs said, yeah, if we're talking yeah, about a so, title, I go with 2000 AD as each issue is such a variety of stories and that way I'd have variety for the rest of my life. But man, would I miss so many Marvel DC comics if I did that. It's a great choice. It's a great no, choice. I just thought it's, yeah. I, yeah. And then, and then there's the Valiant stuff that I always uh, oh. speak so highly about that I'd be like, oh, I can't. Yeah. Great question. That's that's the point of it, is that it makes you really consider your collection. Like, I can never read Walt Simonson's Thor again. I don't know if I could do that. Oh. You see? <laughs> Kaiju Max. That's why I just go with... <laughs> but it's not. It's only 36 okay. issues. I want... That's why I went out. That's what I mean. Amazing Spider-Man's got like 800 issues. I'll be good. <laughs> and then good I, I, I should have picked Batman too. I don't know. Spider-Man. Spider-Man. I'm sticking with Spider-Man. Bring the belt. Reed reads. Spider-Man. Okay. All right. Brilliant question, man. That's like, God, the amount of... <laughs> we can go on all night on that one. So. I'm going to be depressed thinking about everybody I left out. <laughs> and they're going to hate you. Uh, we have a question from someone. I hope I get the pronunciation right on this. Apologies if I don't, but they're called Omega Bread, I think. Um, I'm just going to play and we'll see what we get here. Three, two, one, boom. Evening, there's Omega Bread here. What is your favorite Marvel and DC one? Like and subscribe to the Omniverse Comic Podcast. Just want to say, be, I must be sorry. A big, big thank you to DJ and Aria who who were in that video in the Spidey masks. It's not that Omega Bread is an amalgam of two small children, and that's what we've been harassed by for. <laughs> <laughs> Every night he merges into one. We've been getting trolled adult. by two kids. 
So, uh, what's your favourite Marvel run and favourite DC run? We've kind of talked a little bit about that just now in terms of those runs, but we didn't go into DC very much. So, and you, you you have something yeah. uh, percolating? Yeah, Green Lantern Corps. Go for it. My brain first first thing it did went Green Lantern Corps. There's a lot there. I'd I'd kind of want both though because I technically count. Green Lantern, Green Lantern Corps is one thing, but of the two, Green Lantern Corps is my mm. favourite. And it weirdly, it's the series I didn't want to read. Like, fine, I'll read Green Lantern. I'll try it. I'll try it. It's ridiculous. He can't use his powers on yellow. What the f... But, and then, like, I'm not reading Green Lantern Corps, though. That's just a step too far. I don't know why I thought that. And then right. I tried it and was going, like, oh, my God, this is so even better. This is even better. Loved it. I know. It's good. It's really good. I'm doing this for people watching, like, why is Eric dancing? I'm looking over my shoulder to see what I own from DC because <laughs> it's my around. DC show <laughs> that I have here. Ah. And I was like, I don't want to turn around, but I'm like, that's a really tough, really, really tough question for me because I like so much. Yeah. So many things. And I got a lot of, there's more nostalgia connected with me in DC mm. than I do with Marvel. Because there's there was a time where all I had in my collection were mostly DC comics and the Green Lantern by Jeff Johns is a really I love that stuff a lot. I've read it more than once, so I can definitely say that that would be up there on my list. It would be difficult not to include something from Batman because man, DC and and you know the Peter Tomasi, Patrick Gleason, Batman and oh, the detective no. comic stuff excellent and then conversely the stuff that they did with superman when they during the rebirth time which isn't that long ago their 2016 run that was tremendous as well there's a lot and it's i'll probably go with john Byrne's superman from dc just because of the fact that's what i learned to read comics reading those books so for the for the simple fact that it's like the stuff that i went to the store and when my dad would go get milk, he'd be like, come on, I'll buy you a comic. Those were the books I would get where John Byrne Superman. I couldn't read yet. So I'll probably go with that because I if I, I always say to my wife, if the house is burning down, knock on wood, right? But that's the comics I want to be brought with me, those books. I have a box set aside. Just grab those. Those are the only comics I need you to bring. And it's the whole run of the John Byrne stuff. Yeah. In single issue and in trade paperback. Just because I put it together together. For nostalgia's sake. For Marvel, my favorite run, I would probably say, would come down to two, which is the George Perez, Kurt Busiek Avengers, and then uh, Walt Simonson Thor. I, I would, I'd probably lean toward Walt Simonson Thor, my favorite Marvel run. I did an interview uh, last week. With Walt Simonson? No, that would be amazing. But I was, I was talking to another creator, which will release it, but um, I started to just blabbing about Walt Simonson and, and just how amazing that run is. And they hadn't read it. It's kind of like, you've got to read, you've got to read this run. It's so good. And it's one of those things where like, sometimes I kind of go into a Carly thing. You've got to read Carly. Carly's amazing. But like Walt Simonson just makes me so happy. Nice stuff. Oh, dude, thank you. And thank you, DJ and Aria for that question. Um, have a word with your dad. Uh, make sure that he can come up with a question himself next time. And remember with great power comes great responsibility. All right. Oh, what you was that a Wonder Woman cup? My Wonder Woman sippy cup. It's uh my wife's, but I use it. I'd use it. <laughs> Why I not? I read Wonder Woman. I can't drink from a cup. Yeah, <laughs> I'm steady. New to the Omniverse right now, podcast and video wise. You've got the Fred Kennedy collector's item special. He is one of the most enthusiastic people and an absolute goddamn pleasure to watch. In addition to that, our incoming for February 2024 episode is now up. Our 10 picks for February 2024. Also, if you want to see everything that's coming out in February 2024, the new releases for Feb are up. They're broken up into, as always, Marvel and DC, Image and Dark Horse, and Indie Stroke Alternative Press. ROM reading order went up recently, which covers 1979 to 1994 of the Marvel era. So that's Rom Space Knight based on the toy property from Kenner Parker, I think it was originally, who did Action Man in this country. So it was kind of like an Action Man-sized toy that literally no one wanted. 
and it ended up being a much better comic than it was a toy. If people think that, oh, it was a toy series, it probably didn't really relate to the Marvel Universe, this lets you know who first appeared in it. If you're thinking, oh, I don't know if I want that omnibus, does it really? did it really impact? Go and find out for yourself and make your own decision. Batman Family Reading Order, 1987 to 1988. The post-crisis Batman Reading Order. So it's not just Batman, it's the Bat-Fam. This is like Legends onwards. Subscriber exclusive is the what to read before the Infinity Gauntlet. It lets you know the stuff you really, really need to read to fully appreciate the Infinity Gauntlet. And there's also additional stuff like when people have made reference to like Doctor Strange tie-ins where he goes, oh, I've, um, Silver Dagger, uh, I stole his eye. It tells you when he stole Silver Dagger's eye. It tells you when the Hulk became the Professor Smart Hulk. It tells you all this stuff and it's all in chronological order. So if you want to get in depth, you can get in depth. You want to keep it simple, you can keep it simple, but it's your choice. So we put it out for you and you take your pick. Decide what you want for yourself. We've got our regular news roundup as normal and we've got two Kickstarter spotlights that have just come out. So there are some really nice projects, interesting projects on there that you can pick up if you want to get your indie hit. Awesome. Dave, are you laughing? I don't know if I'm laughing. I'm laughing at the wrongness again. <laughs> <laughs> let's get back into our speakeasy <laughs> do we have another question <clears throat> you guys are ridiculous yes we do <laughs> yes we do thanks for asking yes mm, stall. Uh, our next question is from a mr bc scrubs all the way or why do people say all the way from somewhere like oh, they only went halfway and then they fell in the ocean like what <laughs> Why all the way? Hello, omniversecomics.guide team. I uh, hope you guys are going well. Looking forward to this speakeasy. Um, my question, uh, if you could put together a creative team uh, for any book of your choosing, um, you know, writer, artists, inker, colorist, if you want to go to that level, um, who would it be? And it can be anyone that's living or dead. So um, what would be your perfect team uh, for, uh, perfect creative team for, what character or what team of characters right one of my favorite series of all time is lost light and more than meets the eye from transformers but i haven't read an awful lot from james roberts other than that so james roberts was clearly inspired by marvel uk's transformers stuff when he wrote transformers for idw now one of the series the backup stories that appeared in marvel uk was an obscure character that i really really love and it's machine man so I would like to see Machine Man, written by James Roberts. And uh, I'm trying to think of like an artist that would really work well with like all the technical stuff, isn't it? Because like, when you read the old Kirby comics of Machine Man, it's just like a wheel comes out of his bum. When it was drawn years later by Barry Windsor Smith and Herb Trimp, or inked by Barry Windsor Smith over Herb Trimp, he did all like the technology inside of him and stuff and just looked really, really cool. But the first, the only person I can think of at the top of my head is Death Burger, who's an indie artist who does a lot of high-tech stuff. Or maybe someone like Pi Parr, who's just done Petrol Head. He did some stuff for 2000 AD, like Intestinauts. He's a lot of graphic design stuff for them as well. But he would be really good for that series. That I'd love a Machine Man series by James Roberts. Coloured by nice. uh, Mental Studios as well. Because like his stuff is really cool. So he's the guy that coloured uh, X-Men Mutant Genesis 2.0 hardcover. You know when it was recolored? Yes, 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 I do. I absolutely do. Yes. Thomas Mason, who who coloured that, his stuff is amazing. It's It gives everything a real cinematic feel. So I would want him to colour it. I just, I'm still deciding who I want to draw it. So that's half my answer. <laughs> Machine Man, anyway. I love Machine Man. Nice. My answer is boring. Boring. In what answer. way? For those that watch the podcast or listen to the podcast, because it won't like yours is a little bit more. You dug deep for it, and you have like very specific this guy with this, and like you got a colorist. I want Jeff Johns. Yeah. George Perez. Pretty much anything <laughs> would make me happy, but maybe a Jeff Johns, George Perez, Fantastic Four. Oh, how is that boring? Just because of my my answers to George Perez and Jeff Johns, who I talk about frequently, right? But I never so thought it's you'd not say like Fantastic I'm digging Four. Deep in, I was gonna say Justice League because I really loved what I saw them do together with the Ooh. Final Crisis Legion of Superheroes storyline, where they did five or six issues together, and I was like, that was cool. And then seeing kind of what 
Mark Wade and George Perez did on that Brave and the Bold was a lot of fun. So like a Jeff Johns, George Perez, epic DC story because he's always been close to, mind you, I will say reading this um, Infinite Crisis omnibus and I'm now like on the final issue. It's taken me some time, but there's a lot to read in this. In those final issues, you've got Phil Jimenez and then George Perez, and then Ivan Reyes in one issue. I was trying to, I was thinking Sometimes. that. I thought George Perez did some of the art on it. And him and Phil Jimenez are, you know, Phil Jimenez is like a George Perez student. You can see the yeah. clearly the influence. But Ivan Reyes, you don't get much better than that guy. He no. is incredible. Because you got him, sometimes I, I prefer his art out of everybody within those issues. Yeah, but He's no slouch. Even way back in 2005, 2006, awesome, awesome artist. But I will say a dream team would be maybe George Perez and Jeff Johns working with the Fantastic Four because he would draw just about everything. And George and then Jeff Johns would take all of his sort of Green Lantern, Infinite Crisis sort of cosmic appeal that he has and figure out a way to do something that he's never done before with the Fantastic Four. And I'm just like, let's let's see what that could be. That's a good answer. I don't know. Any more questions we got? Um, yeah, we got more questions. BC Scrubs, hit us up. Um, what's uh, one of your favorite, like, guilty pleasures? Like, you know, a D-list character that you just love or, um, you know, one of those really sort of trashy, horrible comics that everyone else seems to hate that you just love? Uh, what's yours? Um, so, yeah, keep up the great work, guys. So, guilty pleasure. Oh, easy. Probably my greatest guilty pleasure Masters of the Universe, these, yeah? uh, He-Man. Really? I like that book. I like that book. Everyone hates it. I even heard like Dan DiDio out of con. Did you read He-Man? It was a horrible book. I hope you didn't read it. <laughs> to one of the people in the audience. And I'm like, oh, it was fun for me. I know what it was. Truth, truthfully, it, it's not the greatest comic book series. But what I liked about it was that they stuck with it enough to put out a giant humongous omnibus that really shows how committed they were to completing the story hmm. and it's yeah a part of it's part partially you know high fantasy somewhat star wars like and then at the same time it's got that sort of conan feel with a little bit of um uh, like lord of the rings to it like that high fantasy sort of feel and it appeals to the thor the sort of Thor comics that I like, as well as, uh, you know, just it's silly fun. And it's it's stuff that I liked growing up. It was one of my first cartoons as a kid. So it was cool was to it? see, like, oh, they've, they've given it. Yeah, I, I, I was a little too young for Transformers. I just missed that. So I remember the filmation little yeah. that you knew He-Man was going to come on, right? So, and I was just, it was cool to see them build somewhat of a, a universe or a continuity and even realizing that Skeletor isn't the big bad like he is the he is He-Man's main villain but there's even a bigger villain yeah. that I didn't realize like oh he's even above Skeletor that's cool so I think the revelation of realizing that they had gone tried to make this whole universe with Masters of the Universe instead of just silly uh comics connected to a toy hmm. my guilty pleasure i love that book. Uh, i'm regretting selling that omnibus now that's why <laughs> i can't i can't part ways with it i've parted ways with books that are definitely like critically like more critically acclaimed but i just got a soft spot for it it was that, fun to read it? that's the thing with guilty pleasures though yeah. right i mean like there's some stuff that i've read and i kind of feel like i should have that on my no what i'm never going to read it again but what I ha one thing I yeah. haven't parted with that I thought I would have parted with by now is the Jeff Loeb Red Hulk era. And like whenever I post something on Instagram of that era, there's one particular person that goes like, for sake, it's just the Hulk, but red. What the f What the f What's the point? How is it like, what the f And they're so angry about it. And I, like every time I want to go, have you read it? Like, have you, have you read it? Or did you just automatically hate it because i mean even if you have read it you could probably still automatically hate it quite easily it's not like it's genius but i've read it like three times <laughs> now and it's just dumb fun and it's ed mcginnis art on the hulk like 
Ed McGuinness. Is, I'd love Ed McGuinness art. Yeah, why not? If you like, that's the point, though, right? The, the, in a lot of ways, for guy for for comic book fans, comics in and of itself can be a guilty pleasure. Like when you tell people I, I collect comics, they're like, "Oh, you must have your. It, it must be very expensive collection. You must have things that are worth a lot." That's how they always they yeah, think that they do, that's why they? you do it. They think it's it, almost to not make it seem like you're. I'm in my car in the morning on a construction site, and I got an omnibus in my lap. And I'm reading for the for a half hour before I go into work. Like I get there early enough to sip a coffee and do some reading. Right? It's just my quiet time to just relax and feel productive before I have to actually go to work. Yeah. I have no shame in showing people like, this is my collection. Alphabetical order. I read them. You read all those? I read them all. I love it. Right? So right. yeah, when it comes to like re- the really guilty stuff, it's like, yeah, it's not really great, but I love it anyways. Who cares? Red Hulk is completely, yeah, it's completely fine to love that. How about how about for those uh, listening? What about um, what about you folks? Reed Reeds actually says Red Hulk is great and not a guilty pleasure to me. I think so. That's the thing. When we've done guilty pleasure episodes, I think there's this part of me, and I mentioned it last time we did one. There's a mate of mine said, "I don't believe in guilty pleasures," and it's something actually that Corey Taylor, apparently from Slipknot, says as well. I don't believe in guilty pleasures. Like what you like, just like what you like, and be proud of it. But it's like with Red Hulk, the, when I think of it, I think like, do I actually like, why do I like that? <laughs> and that's the part that feels like guilty pleasure to me because it's like, what's good about that? <laughs> I think we always get into the, people get into the debate when it comes to like things that are objective or subjective and, and your tastes in the arts are subjective, right? Yeah. But when you create stuff or when you've observed it enough, you can objectively say this person is a very good guitar player. This person is a very good artist. This person's a very good singer. I don't like it, but it doesn't change the fact that on on somewhat of an objective level, they can hit octaves and they can keep a note. I just don't like the sound of their voice. Yeah. Like that guy plays a great guitar. I just don't like his song. So we can look at our guilty pleasures and realize like this isn't really a great comic when you have read, you know, Peter David's Hulk in comparison to Red Hulk, you realize there's something different. Something left to be desired, well, right? Re- but re- it doesn't change the fact that you love it. This is true. Uh, Reed Reed said, if you read Superhero... Oh, it's just bumped up. If you read Superhero comics, it's hard to have a guilty pleasure. It's ridiculous itself, never mind what the plot is. Which is which is true. It's like when... um, who, I was talking to someone the other day. Oh, it was our guest that I can't talk about yet. But we're talking about Spider-Man. And people getting really serious. I were like, well, that wouldn't happen. How could that happen? That wouldn't happen. Kind of like The dude was bitten by a f- spider. Like, that wouldn't happen. Like, move on. <laughs> if you really can't get over that, don't read Spider-Man. Like, don't get upset about... Yeah. So, I mean, there are some things where you go like, ah, come on, now you are pushing the boundaries of reality here to the point where, like, <laughs> you, you've you've made those events converge to a point where, like, I don't buy this anymore. But that's fine. But shut up. Don't buy it. Don't f***ing whinge about it. It's ridiculous that's anyway. All. It's it's people dressed up in costumes. Swinging around, punching other people dressed up in it's costumes. So I'm going to rob a bank dressed in, dressed in yellow and green, looking like a packet of cheese and onion crisps from the 1980s. Like, it, it's, <laughs> it makes no <laughs> sense. Not at no. all. Like, that dude wears a bowl for a head, like, and he just uses gas to, like, oh, oh special effects. I'm better than you. It's bollocks. Yeah. I love Mysterio. Right. I love what a Mysterio. Ridiculous... Yeah, I love but it. But it's a stupid exactly. idea. Exactly. It's On every conceivable level right there's so many things you look at you're like only in comics that this could be and that's the beauty well, you say of that that's the charm but you look at things like fast and the furious and people are flipping cars in completely impossible ways because it makes it's cinematic it makes it look interesting it looks cool and that's essentially even though i can't stand those films comic yeah. superhero comics aren't much different they're doing the same thing. Look how no. cool this design is. No one could practically make that costume. But doesn't it look great? Like, yes, it really f- does. <laughs> he's a yeah, sentinel of liberty. Point, though, is that- he's he's like he represents America. The dude has wings on his head. And his ears. And plastic <laughs> ears on the costume. <laughs> but we love it. You know, it's it's so silly. That's right. And and it works for comics because when the, lately I've even been feeling a certain extent that a lot of live action things 
don't quite hit the mark the way the comic does, not just because like, I'm a purist, but even when I watch Invincible, the animated version, the the show on um, Amazon Prime, I, I really like it. And I find like this, it works in this format. If you tried to make this live action, it wouldn't quite, I wouldn't want to see people's, you know, a punch through someone's face the way it's depicted yeah. in the animated or in the comic book version. I wouldn't want that to be recreated for authentic, authenticity's sake in a live action. It would be too much. I wouldn't enjoy it, but I really enjoy it in the animated version. It works, and it makes you kind of realize this is its own thing. The stories, the stories are great, still valuable storytelling, but some of it translates the best way on the printed page, right? Yeah. So, yeah, the guilty pleasure. Uh, oh, man, there's so many. We got more answers. So There's tons of answers. This is brilliant. Sorry, let's. Where do we put Clone Saga? Meat Trunk says Clone Saga. Image TMNT. Image, Image TMNT. The original didn't runs on Witchblade. Didn't Do even know. Did they do? T I didn't know that. Um, Omega Bread says my guilty pleasure is West Coast Avengers. Is that is that the burn run? Yes, it is. So, well, some of it, at least by the looks of it, some of the villains during I'm that I'm going to grab a guilty pleasure. Can I just do it? Do it. Do it. Off my shelf for you guys. Yeah. yeah. Um, some of the villains during that era are unashamedly awful. That's why I love it. Master Pandemonium is ridiculous. <laughs> he is ridiculous. The Blank Cactus, the Defiler. The Oops. Defiler? Who's that? I need to double check. I can't remember that character. <laughs> um, that sounds so... Of course you'd love the Defiler. Are you sure you didn't make that one up? That's not you, is it? Reed Reed said, <laughs> my guilty pleasure is probably more the all-age kids comics. And I get that. I'm, at, you know, I'm reading one at the moment to my daughter, and it's called Space Boy. It's about a girl. She lived in a mining station in space and she comes to Earth and she feels like a fish out of water. It's all about her liking this boy. There's something going on with him. There's a mystery there and about her settling in and there's a breakups with the characters. I'm loving this series, man. It's really nice. It's Stephen McCraney's the, the creator. It was a webcomic originally. It's produced by Dark Horse. So do an omnibus version, which is three paperbacks together. So smaller comics, kind of manga size. It's just, it's an absolute pleasure to read. And like when she goes like, oh, I don't know if I want anything read to me tonight. I'm going like, I want to read Space Boy. <laughs> I want to know what's going to happen. Uh, that's so cute. That's nice. Yeah, man. A, a guilty pleasure for me is actually this Jim Valentino, Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, yeah, I quite like that. I found it for it, a really it's sort of terrible, <laughs> but I like it. I got it at a discounted price at a, a good good bookstore in my city, and I gave it a shot because I, I, I like cosmic stories. I like the Guardians of the Galaxy in general, and this is the the team that you're not really familiar with other than Yondu being a part of it. This is the team that isn't in the movie, so I, I gave it a, a blind buy chance. And it was fun. I was reading New Warriors at the same time, and I and I didn't continue my New Warriors collection. Not that there was anything wrong with the book. It was great stuff. Bagley and, and Fabian and Cieza, great stuff. But I got a soft spot for this Jim Valentino Guardians of the Galaxy. It was fun. And I like that it's sort of self-contained. Yeah. Where you're not bogged down by everything else that's happening. You could just kind of read this and appreciate, like, this is their legion of superheroes i guess you can say but it's not so convoluted yeah it's just nice when when little touches of marvel history comes into play yes so yeah. it was fun do you want the final question let's do it let's do it hey dave as someone who runs a uh comics guide website do you have any advice for fans who may feel overwhelmed by the sheer amount of continuity and canon uh, that they may feel confronted with as opposed to just getting into it and having fun. I love this question. Dave, that's for you. Well, you like this question. It's first. I love this question because this is really important because this, this very much touches upon what we do. So that was Aaron Williams. He's the hip hop editor on up rocks. Um, you can follow him on Instagram. He's down as Aaron smarter. It's a great question. And He's absolutely right. The thing f for me is someone who writes these reading orders or puts together these reading orders 
and you're trying to make sense of continuity when continuity ultimately doesn't really make sense because it's tweaked and changed and altered and retconned for years and decades and it's a complicated thing but think back think back to when you started think back to when i mean when i started reading marvel there were no trade paperbacks i think there were starting to see trade paperbacks but there weren't many so they'd reference the older story they talk about you know the older story would impact what you were reading but they'd reference it so if you could find the back issue brilliant and you'd you go track it down or maybe you wouldn't you just carry on regardless and but part of the appeal is that i think of going and finding that older story and reading that older story or do i need to read that older story and actually now we've got the friggin internet we didn't have that in 1989 so you can go on the internet and you can look it up. And if it's not on there, and DC I think is the trickiest one because DC is quite unforgiving. So when I started reading DC in depth around about 2015, I found it really hard because they refer back, mm. but they don't tell you much. And they don't always give you a full flashback. So when you, when you read a 12 issue series from or, or a six part story or whatever from 1985, you'll get a good page or two pages of the, those 22 pages of story that will go into an entire flashback sequence to explain why you're here. So you actually only really get 20 pages of a new story. That's how they used to do it. They don't do it that way anymore. They'll kind of, they might tell you what trade to read it in. They might just let you look it up, but I don't think people need to read, need to worry about continuity so much. Marvel's continuity has changed to the point where, I mean, I'm hearing about stuff happening in the Marvel universe right now where I'm going, that doesn't make sense. Cause like that literally doesn't fit with what's happened. But they're going, we're not restarting. Like, well, you have restarted. You've restarted. Yeah, that's not the same character. The character's different. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this this is a great example of why continuity can matter less and you can just have fun. World's Finest. Very, very recent series. Mark Wade, Dan Mora. Sexy Dan Mora art. I'm not saying okay. Dan Mora's sexy. I've never seen what he looks like. He might be. But that art is, it's just, it's a pleasure. It's every page is a friggin' masterpiece. It is. It's just great stuff. I thought this was a good book, but there were a lot of characters in it. It, it starts to kind of settle towards here. It's almost like they were going, is this going to last? Should we just throw everything at it? <laughs> oh, it is going to last. Let's just settle down and tell some stories. Technically, this is Prime Earth continuity. So what that means is everything post flash, the Flashpoint event. So everything new 52 onwards. So September 2011 onwards, this is part of that continuity, or is it? And actually, if if you think, yeah, it is, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't fit with that because Batman and Superman's relationship is entirely different at the start of the New 52 to how it is in this. But some of the stuff that happens in this impacts the stories. But you could say, well, okay, it doesn't, that's changed now because of what happened in Dark Knight's Metal and the and the multiverse is a different place. If you want to worry about continuity, that's all the stuff you think about. If you don't, don't. Read. Have fun. Stop worrying about it. Just love comics and try them out. And once you pick them up and you look back and you see like, okay, I want to, now I do want to go back and find out what the hell they're talking about. Do it. If you don't, read it as it stands. I don't think people should worry about the continuity so much. I think we're in the era of too many options in a lot of ways, which complicate things, even just watching TV, right? I, I don't know how many times people say, there's nothing on. There's nothing to watch. I can't figure a new show to watch. And there's everything to watch. There's so much more available at our disposal. And now even with comic books, everything is collected. So it's it's so easy to get into comics in a lot of ways, more than ever. But the daunting part is, is what series is this and how do I track yeah. it? So it, it really comes down to, are you reading because you want to read a whole series and get into the collecting of, let's say, I think the Epic collections are a great way to read nostalgic comics because they're all numbered and they're not always released in order. No. Which I think is a great, I like that. Me too. It the, can the numbering is optional. It's there if you want it. Yes. It's not if you don't. That's the way to do it. They put the volumes on the back and not on the spine. So people people who worry about the spines not lining up and don't have that issue. That is a thing. Exactly. It is. And it, and it does make it, because part of the hobby is aesthetic, it depends on you. It really depends on the per person. And how deep do they want to go? Or do they just want to 
Do they want to get deep into a great story because they saw a movie and they really want to read the real Infinity Gauntlet? Mm -hmm. You want to do that? Mm -hmm. Or do you want to, you like the Infinity Gauntlet movie and you want more of something like that? Because you might not get it in a, a Thanos story necessarily, but this book might do it for you. And it's not Marvel or DC. Yeah, point. No? Yeah, yeah, good point. Yeah, I think one of the things that doesn't help, and I know that we are obviously talking talking as fans, sometimes fans don't help. Like when, when fans say, comics are too complicated. Like you can't just start a series and, and go through a run, look how it, you know, they do that comparison to manga, but actually some manga stuff goes on for decades. Like it goes on forever. Yeah. It, that, that's quite a commitment. Right now, Marvel especially, like DC have kind of gone, do you know what? Do we've got some stories do what you want if you think you want that to fit into the to the history fine it does if you don't it doesn't do what you like be happy but marvel i think is it's tricky because like the history is so big now i i wasn't reading this stuff till 1984 and i'm quite old (laughs) so who's been reading it since 1961 who's read all that there's there's too much to take in, so take pick and choose what you like and what works for you. If you don't like it, skip it. If you want to look it up and take a shortcut, take a shortcut. But you know, it's yeah. you don't. Ha- yeah. There is no rule. If I was interested in comics and wanted to read Spider Man, I could talk to you. I could talk to Reed Reads, and I could talk to me, and I would get three answers as to where to start. Easily get three completely different answers, or I could talk to some uber super fan. Who goes, you have to go back to Ditko. You have to do that. Like, do you though? No. So it's like, I don't think no. you should. I think you should go into, this is where I genuinely believe you go in a shop and you do what anyone else would do. And you walk in and you see what appeals to you and you walk out with what appeals to you and you try it. That's what you should do. Now, actually, this is a good point. Meat Trunk says, manga, are, but manga are usually written by the same person over the years, so it makes it easier to follow continuity. So just to yeah, apologize sure. for what I was saying earlier, what I meant was sometimes people want to pick up something concise. They don't necessarily want to commit. They might want to look at something and go like, oh my God, that's 42 yeah. books. And they might not want to do 42 books. And there's plenty of other options that aren't 42 books. So there's loads of manga out there that's, shorter and more concise and to the point as we'll touch upon it in the upcoming episode with with rap as well there are loads of different options but there are some books that have gone on forever where do i start one piece do i start at the beginning am i committing to a whole thing i want a beginning middle and end and that's something that you also don't get from mainstream comics often the beginning middle and end yeah omega bread omega bread makes a good point he says that uh when he started reading spider-man he picked up a random issue of a complete spider-man which had four different stories from Three different, four different books. Each story had a quick recap blurb and was hooked immediately. And the power of the recap page is not is something that can't be overstated. True. It really, really makes a big difference. If catching you up and knowing what you need to know in order to be invested, it's just like the crawl in, in the beginning of Star Wars. Yeah. Star Wars begins in the middle of the story, right? Yeah. You get the crawl, you're like, okay, that's where we're at. So if they are a little bit more old school in that capacity where they give you a little blurb, to catch you up you're good to go yeah Reed Reed says something this is one of the most important points i think if anyone asks for recommendations i ask them what kind of stuff they like already and work from there it's a good method to use for f- with films as well ask people what films they like or what books they like and if you get a feel for like people like action films they're going to want a certain kind of thing i, I want a more of a a love story. I want a Western. I want to, I mean, that's a very generic thing, but you start naming specific films. I really like Quentin Tarantino films, Preacher. Boom. You know, you start to get a feel for what people like. You, all you're doing is you're not trying to solve the problem. You're just giving them a gateway in. So give them something that you feel is genuinely good and let them figure it out. That's what pretty much all of us did. That's why we're here. I'm still loving it. I think the right answer, to be quite honest with you, Dave, and this is like definitively the right answer, is go to the (laughs) omniversecomics.guide. And if you're lost, there's reading orders that will guide you through it if you're having a tough time. What site is this? And if you don't know what to read, you go to omniversecomics.guide. And there's plenty of top 10 lists and starter kits and recommended stuff to help you on your way if you don't know what to where to start Sounds whether good. dc cosmic marvel 
team books, uh, fight scenes. We've got you covered. Thank you, everybody, for who submitted a question. That was good. Yeah. Good I'm stuff. Out of breath. Thank you, everybody. Don't forget, rate and subscribe on Twitch, on YouTube, on all the pod- podcast platforms that you enjoy listening to us on. We appreciate the love. And visit omniversecomics.guide. I don't think I've said it enough times, but one more time. <laughs>